So the ninth dude has a question, and his question is, hi, Tech and Rogue, what tiered or slash cast storage solution or software would you recommend for SSD plus hard drive to maximize storage and speed? This is a fair question, and it's not something that I personally have spent enough time doing to give a in-person answer. If there's a topic that I have personal experience with that I've used, like, like different SSDs or which ones are worth it, then I absolutely will sit here and tell you affirmatively, go this direction, I 100% endorse it because of X, Y, and Z, because of all this stuff I've played with, yep. that's the answer you can take my word for. it. When we have a situation like this, I will give you my thoughts and opinions, but I also need to follow up with it and get some more experience with it. So the question is tiered cache and storage. AMD had it with their storage uh, MI technology briefly, although they discontinued it. They're gonna come out with a refreshed version. Okay. They're doing some stuff with it. There are some third party uh, tools that do it and Intel has their, um, uh, their Optane storage, and oh, yes. Intel has actually had tiered storage for a while, but very few people have ever used it. It never really caught on. What's interesting is Apple has done it for years actually very successfully. Of course, they even Apple started to move away from it. It used to be if you bought uh, certain MacBooks or an iMac, you'd have maybe 128 or 256 gigs of SSD storage mm -hmm. and a one or two terabyte hard drive. Mm -hmm. And Apple has something called Fusion Drive. Oh, yes. Fusion Drive is their marketing term, and to be completely blunt, whether you love or hate Apple, Apple does really good with some of their names and terms because it, they Apple do. Fusion Drive is kind of catchy. Storage MI is not. No. It, it just, it is what it is. So, what it is, is it's giving you a single block of storage and allowing the computer internally to decide what am I going to put on the SSD, what am I going to put on the hard drive. You get one drive letter, well, on Windows, but on the Mac, you get one storage vault. Oh, interesting. And the computer just manages what goes where, huh. and it uses the SSD to make your machine feel more snappy and responsive right. without you having to manage 16 different drive letters. Ooh. It's a cool idea. Intel has tried it with their, with their tiered storage, and of course they came out with Optane, and the idea is you can get a... Uh, an Optane drive and tier it with a hard drive. You can actually even do Optane, SSD, hard drive with three oh. tiers of storage all in one drive letter. Okay. Here's the problem. Optane doesn't accelerate SSDs by nearly enough to be worth the trouble. Well, yeah, you did a video on that, right? I have not, but I've seen other. I've seen the results of other people doing it. It's minor. Um, I've, well, I've done a video on Optane, yes. but it didn't do tiered storage. Oh, okay. I, I, just, I just played with the Optane drive. Just with, okay. Hellaciously fast... But Delicious only, expensive. well, yes, but only in an intense multi-user or multitasking environment. For single task work, Optane isn't that much faster than a normal SSD. Now, if you wanted to update, like if I could afford it, I'd put a two terabyte Optane drive on my test benches and all the multiple game updates and launchers and when I turn one on after two weeks, <laughs> it'd be amazing. But that's not a normal, most people don't have that situation. No. So regarding getting like, say, a 500 gig SSD or perhaps a one terabyte SSD, and pardon me, my love, if you were to get like a 16 terabyte performance hard drive and you were to put a one or two terabyte SSD in front of it and do tiered storage, giving you a single drive letter, and you could put all of your Steam games on it and your most frequently played games and patches and updates would run on the SSD, and then in the background, they'd get moved over to the hard drive. Yep. It's a cool idea. The only problem is that it strikes me as a niche market demand or solution and something that a lot of people aren't gonna do, which is why I've not made a video on it or spent a lot of time with it. I will also be bluntly honest and say that at some point you have enough SSD storage, you just put everything on SSDs and be done with it. That's actually what Apple has done. Most of their new machines now, they've gotten rid of all hard drives and they just come with one or two terabytes of SSD space. So they're moving away from Fusion and just and they're just not doing hard drives at all anymore. And as SSDs get cheaper and larger, I, these are just going to become less and less common, huh. which is probably why AMD discontinued their storage of my technology because it's, mm. it probably was not being used very much. They had to put time and effort into it. True. They had to pay a licensing cost for it because they actually got the software from a third party. Right. And if very few people are using it, There's a bit of a dream. why bother? Exactly. Because it is something that takes their time and attention to keep up with. And if, if, it's, if it's being used by less than you know, one or two percent of the users, it just doesn't make sense for them, but they've got other things to focus their time and attention on. Very true. And so I submit this question to the audience. 
There we go. How much do you want to see a video with my thoughts on tiered storage and my recommended configuration? Now, my thinking in this is I'm not going to run benchmarks because I think that any benchmark you run, either you have to literally spend days and days and days to run benchmarks on tiered storage because you have to overrun the yeah, SSD cache yeah, you and you have to do different kinds of tests because if you just run crystal disk mark and run a quick benchmark, all you're testing is the SSD. Exactly. You, you're not, what's the point? What I would actually have to do to make such a video is that I'd have to take a hard drive, take an SSD, set it up. I'd have to install Steam games. I'd have to yep. install, I, I'd want to put um, Wargaming's installer with World of Tanks and World of Warships. Yep. Uh, I'd put Battle.net with uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Overwatch, etc. I'd put Steam, I'd put Origin, I'd put Uplay. I'd put them all on there. Okay. And then I would turn it off for a week. Oh. And then I would turn it on, on and watch them all try to update at the same time as they do all their patches. Yep. And then I would try playing games off of it. And then I would play game. I, see, I, this would be like probably a two or three week process yeah, it would. where I would want to use it and actually play games on it. Yep. Maybe I'd even Twitch stream with it and talk about my real time live experiences over on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Because here's what I would want to do. I don't want to make a video where I just throw a couple of charts up. I am of a very dim opinion of charts for that kind of test. Well, yeah, not a different. Why do you think ultra budget? It's an example of why ultra budget SSDs benchmark nicely, but they perform poorly in the real world. Where <laughs> per performance SSDs, the benchmarks aren't that much better, but the minute you actually use them, you go, "Oh my, God, that's why they cost more." Yeah. So the same thing here is I want to be able to use it because I want to make a video where I say, "Okay." Here's how much SSD you need. I tried this. I tried this. Here's the hard drives I tried. And you know what I'd actually do? What? I'd try it with this Exos ridiculously expensive performance <laughs> enterprise drive. I would also take one of those eight terabyte shingled magnetic recording archive drives and try it with that. Good luck with that. Do you see all the testing required oh, to do yeah, this? That's... <laughs> And I am. We a need to employ half of them to. to but help therein us. lies my challenge, and that's why I'm putting it to the audience because. That's a lot of work for a video that I am of the opinion will not apply to most people. Exactly. Exactly. But I could be wrong. And so I'll be looking forward to people's comments as to whether or not that has value. And of course, the stock answer is if you can afford more, get more. Don't get a shingle magnetic recording drive. Get a quality drive. Get a bigger SSD. Yep. That solves the problem. Yep. All right.